Okay, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, hello, Francesca. It's nice to meet you here. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we are going to wait for a couple of minutes until the audiences join us and then I'm going to talk a little bit about these programs and uh, today's live show and then I'm going to ask Francesco Leo to join us, okay? We'll go, uh, we will wait a couple of minutes until everybody joins us. Okay, hello everyone. Thank you for joining. Thank you. We are still waiting for everybody to join. Okay. Okay. I think we are going to start and then we will ask uh, Francesca to join us. Okay. Uh, these programs that I'm uh, holding every week is about pre uh, performance related injuries among musicians and how we can actually prevent, reduce or eliminate them which is really important for musicians and uh, despite uh, other uh, activities that uh, have repetitive motions, musicians don't have fundamental exercises and don't really care about their health so uh, I would say uh, we need to know more about ourselves. These uh, live shows are mainly to inform musicians about these injuries and how uh, they can prevent it. Today we are going to host Francesca Leo, uh, uh, an accomplished uh, flutist, soloist and uh, performance-related expertise. Uh, she is the founder of uh, Playing Without Pain, which is a, a website and platform that connects musicians with different methods in the world to help them uh, stay healthy and not experiencing or facing problems or, uh, let's say, uh, debilitating conditions. Okay, uh, we will wait a few more seconds uh, until the audiences reach uh, at least a uh, number that is okay for us, okay. Uh, I'm going to back in a second. Okay, I think that it's good to start now. Uh, I'm going to speak Persian for a few minutes to welcome people who joined us from Iran. And then uh, we will uh, invite uh, Francesco and start a live show. Uh, I'm going to speak friend, uh, Persian for a few minutes. خب من سلام عرض می کنم خدمت تمام کسایی که حالا از ایران به ما اضافه شدن یا هر جای دیگه دنیا هستن و فارسی صحبت میکنن. خیلی خوشحالم که بهمون اضافه شدید. باعث افتخاره. این برنامه‌ای که ما داریم هر هفته در واقع برای اینه که بتونیم موزیسین ها رو نسبت به آسیبای نوازندگی و چیزایی که در واقع میتونه برشون خطرناک باشه و به مسیر حیفرشون آسیب بزنه آگاه کنیم ما هفته قبل اریل وایس رو داشتیم که یه مربی با سابقه در واقع الکساندر تکنیک هست و سرتیفای الکساندر تکنیکی بود با غلاده چیز به درد بخور و مفیدی به امون گفت و کلی چیز ازش یاد گرفتیم این هفته ما فرانچسکا لیو رو داریم که مؤسس سایت نوازندگی بدون آسیب هست بدون درد هست و یه فلوتیس بسیار خوب نوازنده سولیسته از نیویورک امریکا به امون اضافه میشه و امروز راجب مسائلی مثل همین نوازندگی بدون آسیب و نوازندگی بدون ده و حالا روی کرده مختلف که توی دنیا نسبت به این قضیه است باش صحبت خواهیم کرد اگر سوالی داشتید بی زحمت همینجا فارسی بنویسید سوالاتون بی زحمت این فارسی بنویسید که اگر انگلیسیه من خودم به انگلیسی برگردونمشون یه وقت اگر انگلیسی باشه ممکنه دقیقا اون مطلبی که میخواید نباشه و یه خورده سخت بشه 
ترجمه کردنش فارسی بنویسید من ترجمه میکنم و بعدم آخر دوباره یه که سوال ها جواب خواهیم داد من مجددا شروع میکنم انگلیسی صحبت کردن و از فرانچسکا دعوت میکنم که بهمون اضافه بشه اوکی okay. everyone uh, thank you for joining again uh, I'm gonna ask Francesca to join us and uh, uh, start our live show okay Francesca I'm sending you an invitation Uh, let me find you here and then I will send you the invitation. Francesco, I'm sending you the invitation. Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Do you hear me? Sorry? Do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Is everything okay? Yes, perfect. Okay. Good to see you here. How are you? Good to see you too. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, and uh, I believe that tonight, uh, there are, you have a lot to share us and we will learn a lot from you. Thank you for joining. Of course, thank you for having me. I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> It's my pleasure. Okay, Francisco, uh, uh, at first, uh, tell us about yourself. Okay, I think our right, yeah. are really, really happy to hear about you. Great. So my name is Francesca Leo. I am a flutist. I just graduated with my master's degree from the Manhattan School of Music. And I am also the founder of Playing Without Pain, which is an interactive website committed to connecting collegiate music students and also all musicians to resources to treat and prevent performance related injuries and maintain good mental health. So thank you so much for reaching out to me. This is a topic that I'm very passionate about and I've done a lot of research in the field. I recently completed a certification in the Performing Arts Medicine Association Essentials of Performing Arts Medicine course, and I'm currently pursuing a certification as a body mapping educator as well. So this is a topic that I'm really passionate about. Uh, I was personally injured myself um, a couple of years ago. I had severe performance-related injuries. Uh, I was diagnosed with tendonitis at age 16 in my forearm, and then I was later diagnosed with it in my shoulder, meaning that it had spread over time. So I'm really passionate about this. I'm really passionate about connecting musicians to as many resources as possible to prevent and treat these injuries. Uh -huh. Thank you, thank you. That was good to hear from you. Okay, uh, how long have you been practicing music, Francesca? I started learning the flute when I was in sixth grade. So 11 years old, but before that, I was also playing guitar and I played a little bit of piano too. I've always been interested in music, um, but I started flute when I was 11 years old. So it's been about 13 years, I think, <laughs> that I've been studying uh -huh. flute. Um, so it's been quite a journey. I love it. I'm still trying to practice and perform as much as possible. Uh, obviously, the live performance are limited right now but i'm trying to um set up some virtual projects and things like that to yes, yes, yes. yes yeah. i know about them okay, did you still play the guitar or not? i did yeah and you're a guitarist as well right yes yeah. uh, <laughs> i i was not very good at it but i enjoyed it <laughs> <laughs> what uh, you, you used to play the guitar before flute or after that mm -hmm. uh before and then also the first few years that i was learning flute i was also playing in guitar uh, playing guitar so i was mostly playing in rock and pop settings i did a little bit of jazz um but i i could never read music very well on guitar it, it seems very complicated <laughs> there's a lot of strings uh -huh. yeah. yes i understand <laughs> <laughs> okay Francesca what happened that you you know you got interested in uh, performance related injuries and different approaches around the world and you start you know uh, establishing your website and working in this field what happened 
So as I mentioned earlier, I, I got pretty injured when I was uh, young and when I was first starting to play. And I can talk a little bit more about that. Um, so basically, I had never heard of a musician suffering from any kind of pain when they were playing. So when it started happening to me, I didn't really think anything of it. And I didn't think that it was a problem. So I kind of just ignored it. I did mention it to my doctor in an appointment pretty early on, around when I was age 16. So she examined me and she gave me a diagnosis of forearm tendonitis. But even then, I wasn't quite sure of entirely of what my symptoms were. So it was hard for me to explain because it was something that I just had never heard of before. So she um, gave me a diagnosis and she just recommended me to stop playing for a couple of weeks and just rest and ice it on and off. And of course, I was involved in so many different musical organizations outside of high school at that time. So I really didn't think I had time to rest. And so I, I foolishly didn't really take care of myself because I was still young and I didn't really know what being injured meant. And so the longer that I continued on without taking care of my body and just uh, playing and practicing in the ways I was used to, the injury actually got worse. And a big part of the reason that my injury got worse was um, I really firmly believe the mental health component component as well. Because when I was an undergrad, I was very, very stressed out. And I was very overwhelmed. And I felt like I was always comparing myself to people. And I was practicing so much, like way too much. And I wasn't taking any breaks. And so my injury just got really, really bad. And I remember there was one point the summer of my junior year of undergrad, where I was at a summer festival and it was a pretty competitive summer festival. So I was doing my usual practicing for four or five hours at a time, not taking any breaks and not even allowing myself to like take a break to eat lunch or anything because I was like, oh, I'm just so behind. I need to keep practicing. And so I remember vividly, I couldn't play for more than five minutes without experiencing shooting pains down my arm. <laughs> so it was really, really scary. But that moment served as a huge wake up call for me. And I, ever since then, I really took it seriously. It was a moment where I was honestly afraid that I wouldn't be able to continue playing my instrument um, at the level of which I was accustomed. So I really felt alone at that point, but I went to go see another doctor and I got an updated diagnosis and he recommended physical therapy. And that's something I hadn't done before. So I started with physical therapy and it was great. And I also started with Alexander Technique lessons. Uh, there was a teacher at my school that I connected with. And so that was wonderful. I love Alexander Technique. I know that you recently had a guest uh, teacher speaking, and that was really awesome. Yes. I loved that. <laughs> but so I was yes. working with Alexander Technique and physical therapy, and also my teacher trying to implement some healthier lifestyle habits um, to treat the injury. And it came time to pick a topic for my, my honors thesis, I had to pick a topic for my senior year of undergrad. And my private teacher at the time recommended uh, performing arts health. And so I was thinking about it and I was like, oh yeah, like I have a personal experience with that. And I'm really curious to know how many other people are experiencing the same things because nobody was talking about it. And so I went through the IRB and I got approved to do a research study at my undergraduate and I found that 84% of students were also experiencing a performance-related injury of some form. And so that was really eye-opening and it really just motivated me to continue starting the discussion and continue research in the field because I didn't know how badly my peers needed it as much as I did. And so in my research, I've found so many similar studies that support either similar or higher statistics of musicians being injured. And so every time that I read that, I'm just constantly reminded of why I do what I do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what you did was exactly uh, the thing that all the musicians do. You know, when they are experiencing or facing problems or debilitating conditions, they don't stop. They just carry on uh, mm -hmm. until uh, they reach a point that uh, they are not able to do anything else. And at that time, they start to think, okay, why uh, should I have done this? You know, maybe I was wrong in some places. You know, the, I, I believe the problem is the uh, uh, education system somehow because they don't inform musicians about this, you know. For example, if I, uh, I'm a professional athlete and I play, uh, you know, 
sports they are they all they are always you know some fundamental exercises or let's say uh, an absolutely rich diet and stuff like that but uh, for musician they never inform us about these problems and how we can actually take care of ourselves you know uh, because uh, Ariel used to, uh, in in our previous session. Ariel told us, "Okay, uh, our body is the instrument. We don't take care of, of our body. You know, we just use it for play the instrument. But the absolute instrument is our body. We have to take care of that. And uh, I think that's a big problem because musicians uh, are not really informed. Lack of information is uh, somehow uh, not impressing in this field. Uh, and." Uh, uh, which part of your body was uh, mostly injured, you know, which part you used to, you know, experience pain? Mm -hmm. It was my, it's primarily my left shoulder. It started out as my left and right forearms, um, and then it, it spread, and the worst of my injury was in my left shoulder. So um, I'm hypermobile, and that often causes me to overstretch, with, which I believe is part of the issue, and I've spoken to a couple of medical professionals about that in regards to my own personal injury. Um, so that was an exciting discovery that I made just a couple of years ago. Um, and my shoulder actually, like, it, it's not completely in place. <laughs> so it used to, um, it, it still cracks a lot. And so I'm still trying to figure that out, uh -huh. working with medical professionals. Um, the pain is significantly reduced ever since I've started treatment. Um, but I'm still in my own journey of solving my own performance related injury. And so I, I like sharing what I find in my journey along the way with, with my followers, because I know that some people can relate, but I also know that everyone's injury is different and it's really important to know your own body and you know, like you have yes. to seek specific medical attention uh, for yourself so that you're getting the appropriate diagnosis and treatment because it's not a one-size-fits-all method yes yes I, I i totally agree with you because uh you know uh we have to pursue our uh treatment according to our body because uh, everyone is different you know we have mm -hmm. to respect this uniqueness and uh think about ourselves you know we have to recognize ourselves and uh treat us as uh, our body needs mm -hmm. because everyone yeah. is different. And uh, something else, uh, you said in, uh, the main problem was in your left shoulder. Okay, in my picture, it's vice versa. You see, I'm touching my right shoulder in your yeah. picture, okay? Uh, yes, you said uh, it was in your left uh, shoulder. Why? Because of the contractions or stiffness? Because uh, it, it was not absolutely RSI, you know, repetitive mm -hmm. external injuries. It was not like that because uh, as a flutist, you don't use your shoulder a lot. But uh, what was that? What was the problem that uh, happened in your shoulder? The shoulder is, it's always engaged when we're playing the flute. And so when you have tension, your whole arm is connected. So when there's tension in one part of the arm, there can be tension in the entire arm. And so that's a lot where the work with body mapping and Alexander technique has been really beneficial to me is just learning connection um, of my own body because I used to not be aware of my body at all when I was playing and I would have a lot of tension, especially in the upper body because I didn't even know that I should be thinking about my legs or my feet or my connection to the ground. And so I was just so out of touch with that part of myself for so many years. But once within the last few years, once I've been practicing more of the body awareness exercises and body mapping and Alexander technique, I've learned that it's really so important to be connected to all of your body and not just the muscles that you're using when you're playing your instrument. And so a lot of flutists do experience uh, shoulder problems as a result of playing and especially um, instruments that are held asymmetrically. I've, I've read a lot about shoulder injuries, but it's usually a symptom of something bigger or an inefficiency in the way that you're playing. So uh, that's, that's what I found so far. And I'll just give a disclaimer. I'm not a medical professional, but I have done a lot of research in the field. Um, if your experience is different, you should definitely, um, definitely have confidence in that. And I'm not trying to medically advise anyone right now. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you. No, I, I really do. <laughs> <laughs> I really believe that you are an expertise in this field because the researches you have done is, I think, great. And uh, you have information about all, uh, all of the methods, uh, as far as I know, and you have practiced uh, most of them. So I think uh, you have an absolute command over this subject and uh, you really can help me exist in this field. Uh, okay, uh, between the methods or method uh, that you have uh, practice and experience, which one did you use, uh, you know, more, uh, let's say, practical and useful for musician in uh, all their injury, not uh, in, in all their journey, not only in the time that they are injured or they are in pain, for all whole their career, which one do you uh, usually suggest or which it's ones? Yeah, it's really multifaceted because uh, recovering from a performance related injury takes so much work in so many different parts of your life. Um, Alexander Technique is a great example of that because not only do we examine our relationship to our body and the connection, but we also examine where we may be holding tension in other parts of our daily life. So for example, something really interesting that I discovered when I was doing an independent study with Alexander Technique during my master's degree is uh, I, my teacher had given me a challenge to examine where I was being tense in other parts of my life and I so I did that for one full day and then I continued doing it after that but I realized that when I was brushing my teeth I was gripping the toothbrush and when I was driving mm -hmm. I was gripping the steering wheel and so I think it, it's just really subconscious and it's really important to also be aware of that because it could be contributing to other things that develop into a performance related injury so Alexander technique is great body mapping is wonderful Feldenkrais method is wonderful Yoga is wonderful. Um, any kind of breath work and meditation is really important, especially just to get connected with um, what I've learned recently is the more uncomfortable parts of yourself. You have to kind of just face it and you can really do so in meditation and breath work. And also um, seeking medical attention to physical therapy has been so helpful to me throughout the recovery process of my injury. Um, I also saw a body tuning specialist when I was living in New York City. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that practice. Um, but are you familiar with it? No, no. Okay. No. Okay. Yeah, it was Dr. Shmuel Tats. It was really, really interesting because they incorporated massage therapy, physical therapy, and also a more holistic element of healing. Um, so that was really interesting and it really helped me um so i think it's really uh, for musicians or no yeah it was for performing artists uh -huh. so if i can send you a link after if you'd like to look into it but it was really helpful i believe the only place in america is in new york city though right now but they do have a youtube channel that you can follow along with videos so i'll send that that's wonderful <laughs> yeah yes yes, yes. Thank you. It's such a multifaceted okay. process. Yes, you need a link, process. and I have to figure it out. Okay, I will. Um, I can do that after. But yeah, Thank it's such a Thank multifaceted you. process, and you really just it, it takes work to know what will work best for you and your body, because everyone has mm -hmm. a different lifestyle. Everyone comes from different experiences, and I think the way to find that is really just through being in touch with yourself and being in touch with your mind and, and what you need. And once you figure out what you need, then you can seek help from professionals. But I think so many of us go and seek help and we really aren't aware of what's going on. And so sometimes the help isn't exactly what we need. Yes, yes, precisely. Uh, so you say that for uh, you know, experience and injury-free life, we need to have different methods and different uh, ideas and information uh, that could help us in every step. Yes. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. And uh, you talked about the daily activities. I, I truly believe in that. You know, uh, yeah. our daily activities have have a, a strong impact on our uh, instrument playing because. For example, uh, just imagine I'm talking on the phone. You will see uh, people do something like this. So the alignment of the shoulders is awful now. So mm -hmm. if they play, for example, flute, they're going to have the same problem in uh, that case, you know. And yeah. they start to, you know, 
a pain here and they think, okay, it's because I'm playing the instrument. But sometimes the problem is in uh, our lives, our daily activities and the poor postures that we, we usually have. For example, uh, as a guitarist, we, pe we see people, they actually sit like this. Okay, when they play the guitar, there are too many contractions here. So we, we have to expect no injuries in that case. And I, I truly yeah. believe that uh, our daily activities has you know, have a really, really big impact on our instrument playing. Yeah, definitely. And I can share an interesting personal story with myself regarding that. And maybe you will have a comment after because I know that the work you do really incorporates the full body as well. But when I was yes. uh, visiting the body tuning therapist when I was in New York City, um, he was, it was an initial examination. And so he was examining my shoulder because I told him that's where my injury was. But then he was also examining my, my ankles and my feet. And I was wondering why, because I was like, oh, well, I don't have pain there. And then he just asked me this question. He, he said, have you sprained your ankle a lot when you were a child? And I was like, yeah, I did. I used to sprain it all the time. I played soccer and I, I would always sprain my ankle. I've always had weak ankles. How did you know that? And it was something about the way that I was walking. He was examining me and he noticed that right away. And so he said that that could be part of the issue that I have the ankles and I have learned to kind of adapt over that in my walking. And that could be leading to inefficient movement while I'm walking, while I'm playing, while I'm standing. Um, and so it could have contributed to uh, the performance related injury in a small sense as well. But I, just never even thought about that because I was like, oh, well, why would having a weak ankle affect my flute playing injury? <laughs> so it was really <laughs> interesting, but feel free to comment if, if you have any similar experiences or if like you've learned anything like that in your research. Yes, that's really interesting because body coordination plays a great role in, uh, you know, in everything, even in instrument playing, in uh, for example, as you said, uh, I used to play soccer too. I think we have too much in common. Yeah. <laughs> I had the same problem too, I think. Uh, and now that you told me the story, I believe that I also had a problem in body coordination. I just now got the you know, flashback and said, oh, that was the problem. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Soccer. It was just yeah. such a fascinating discovery. And then the uh, more Francesca, I've been doing. Sorry? Do you Can see me? Your picture is frozen. Can you see me? Uh, do you see me now? Do yeah. you have my picture frozen? Can you see me? Yes, yes. It's okay, okay. now. Okay. okay. I didn't uh, hear what you said. Can you uh, could you please repeat it again? Yeah, so it was just such a fascinating realization for me. And that was before I really started researching in body mapping. And once I did, I realized that there's really just such a connection to the entire body. And so if one part has been injured in the past, it could contribute to other injuries in the future. And so I really just started relearning how to walk and how to stand. And I realized that I was actually used to shifting too much, which was putting you're frozen again. Can you see me? Am I back? Hello? Hello? Can you see me? Uh. I think there's a problem. Me? Let me uh, check it out. Uh. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. No, I can hear you.
Hi. Hello, Francis. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. okay. Oh, so sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know if it was yeah. uh, or not. I think, it was one of the, I think the problem was um, my internet. I think I got disconnected for a second. Sorry, I'm really sorry. Okay. okay. No problem. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I did the last sentence again. I'm really sorry. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, so um, I just, the more that I started researching body mapping, the more I realized that there was um, a connection, such a connection through the whole body. And so if one part has been injured in the past, even if it's your ankle or something like that, it can really contribute to the way that you're standing and the way that you're moving. And it can contribute to, in some small part, to the development of other injuries as well. So it's really important to heal the whole body and not just the area with the primary injury. And that's something I've learned in the last few years. Yes, I really agree with you. <laughs> you know, the, the worst thing about these uh, approaches is that when you start learning them, you understand the problem is not that small. It gets big and bigger. You know, you understand, okay, yeah. my whole body uh, you know, connected is affected and I'm Really, uh, I have to change my bad habits. It's awful. I have to change everything. So you, uh, at yeah. first, you are, uh, at, you are a little bit scared, you know, and that's why musicians don't like to practice it. They say, uh, okay, I have to change everything, and we don't really like it. You say, okay, I have to start from the beginning, but in fact, it's not like that. You know, if you uh, find that the, the self-evaluation and you understand yourself, you can uh, use all the, uh, you know, knowledge and practices from the past and use it now but in a correct way which is really important uh, it's actually time uh, you don't waste your time you're saving it in my estimation what's your idea about it absolutely yeah absolutely i completely agree and it also takes a lot of mental work too and i think a lot of people are like you said afraid uh at first when i when i started researching i was really only just focused on treating my physical injury and then I realized that in order to do that, I had to change so many things about my entire life. And so it's been a multi-year process that I've been discovering that. And I learn something new every day. I, I learn new things from the people I'm following. I learn new things from research. I learn new things from people following me. It's just, we have a really great community here on Instagram. And I've, I've learned so much here in addition to outside of my daily life as well. So. It's just, it's been wonderful. And I'm, I'm so glad that we have this community. Yes, uh, thank you. You are doing great and you are connecting all of us. It's wonderful. I found many of the people in this field uh, from you and uh, awesome. I, I, I really want to thank you. Yes. That's my goal, so I'm, I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah. You have a great platform, you know, it's wonderful. And you really help musicians. Thank you. That's that's really nice to hear. I'm I'm so glad that it's helpful and it's really helpful for me too to just share my own experiences. It helps me process and I I always think if someone can relate as I'm sharing then that's that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. So I that's so good to hear. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. I just said the truth. Uh, okay, uh, you told us about body mapping. Can you just describe a little bit about it? Because I'm no, I know that you are really experienced and uh, knowledgeable in that field. Yeah, so I'm actually, I haven't started the official trainee process yet. I'm still an affiliate, which means that I'm learning everything there is to know about myself. And then once I start the trainee process, then I will learn everything there is to know about how to help others with the practice. But first, it takes a lot of work um, just analyzing yourself and, and your movements and your efficiency in moving. So... Um, Basically, if you're not familiar with body mapping, everyone has a body map from the time that you're very young. And it's really, it's influenced by the way that you learn to crawl and the way that you learn to walk. And so a lot of people learn to crawl and learn to walk in their own way, which can sometimes be inefficient and it can lead to muscle imbalances, but we're not aware of it. And it's not something that's bad and it's not wrong when we're learning it because we're just doing the best we can. But later in life, if you have learned inefficient movement, it can result in injuries or tension. And so body mapping is really just examining your body map and being familiar with your body and your alignment. 
and finding the most efficient posture and the most efficient um, way of movement for you specifically. So it's a really individualized practice. Mm -hmm. And uh, where did you find it? A, a special place or a special teacher? Yeah, I, so I actually found it through my research in performing arts health. I started out I have a lot of experience taking Alexander Technique lessons and also studying Alexander Technique. And so I graduated from my master's and I decided performing arts self is really a field that I want to um, pursue in the future. And so I was looking into certifications and I found the body mapping certification and I got connected with a couple teachers in the field, um, Leah Pearson and Amy Lykar and Rena Urso. They're all flutists that also teach body mapping. And so I've met them through various flute conventions as well. So I started taking lessons and I started researching um, and watching videos. And so I'm almost completed with the affiliate stage and then I will apply for the trainee stage. Um, so, but it does take a lot of mental and, and physical work and just awareness of yourself to even reach the trainee stage. Yes, yes, I know. Thank you. Uh, and a uh, question, uh, in body mapping, you scan yourself and you find the self-evaluation, self-awareness, and you understand, okay, uh, the true map of my body is something like this, for example. Is there any a special exercise? For example, if I understand that, but uh, sometimes when we are playing uh, our instrument and the uh, piece gets really difficult and advanced, uh, some people, you know, uh, start to put some strain places on their bodies. For example, they, they put a strain place here, they uh, do some contractions to you know, to be able to play that uh, you know, difficult uh, piece of music. Uh, is there any special exercise that could uh, we, uh, amuse muscle? We call it uh, muscle contraction release exercises. When uh, you have a muscle contraction, we give you some exercises to get rid of that. Is there any of those exercises in body mapping or Alexander technique or any other? methods? Yeah, so it's really all about awareness. And I'd love to learn more about your exercises as well, if, if you can talk more about that, because it sounds really interesting. Uh, with body mapping and Alexander technique, it's really just about awareness of the inefficiencies and awareness of your own habits. Um, so it, for me, has involved a lot of unlearning, uh, because much like you develop a body map of yourself when you learn to walk or crawl, you also develop a body map when you learn how to play your instrument. And uh, so I played with, um, I can demonstrate, but I used to hold my flute with my wrist. It was almost at a 90 degree angle for the right hand. It was so bad, <laughs> but nobody <laughs> told me that that was not okay until I got connected with um, a private teacher a couple of years after. And she was like, oh no, like you need to keep your wrist neutral. That's really important. And so at that point, my, my forearm had already been aggravated from three years of playing like that. And nobody told me that that was bad. And so I learned a lot of poor habits right from the start um, that contributed to the acceleration of my development of injuries. <laughs> so it's really, um, you kind of have to just take a lot of time to work with teachers and have them analyze you while you're playing and also analyze yourself. Playing in front of a mirror is really helpful. That's how I kind of discovered that I was also raising my left shoulder when I was playing, I was playing like this. And so uh -huh. actually after a while, I, I remember an early physical therapy appointment that I had. My physical therapist was like, oh, do you, do you realize one of your shoulders is higher than the other? And that was when I was away from my instrument. And I was actually like, <laughs> kind of not that exaggerated, but I was like sitting like this just because I was used to it from playing. And so that was yeah. one of the first things that we worked on was the the imbalances in your body. It's a common you problem. You know, guitars always, especially the flamenco guitars and pop guitars, they're like this always. They are playing in yeah. this position. They raise the right shoulder and, you know, uh, actually put some con uh, contract the muscles here and they start playing. But, uh, yeah. you know, when, when you are not... Uh, Really, you know, I, I believe when you start researching about performance-related injuries and the uh, true uh, good posture and uh, stuff like that, you uh, you become too aware of the situation and your eyes understand it. For example, you see a player say, "Oh, he's for example, he's uh, 
uh, say uh, is straining his right, for example, shoulder, or he's you know uh, he has been contracted his muscle inside mm-hmm. uh, inside of himself, uh, but he is not aware of it. He's just playing, and he thinks, okay, I'm playing freely, but in fact, he is not. You know, yeah. but your eyes become to be you know really accurate, and you understand uh, these problems. But uh, uh, in case that you haven't start performance related injuries, researches, and stuff like that, you don't understand that. And you see, you say, okay, it's the uh, true post posture for playing, for example, the guitar. But in fact, it's not. We have to be the, uh, you know, exactly like we are standing, uh, sitting here or standing here, and the guitar should come here, you know. But uh, we usually change our body around and our posture uh, according to an instrument. For example, you play the flute, you do something like it. But in fact, you have to be like this, and the flute should be here, you know. Your uh, expertise in this field, okay? Let me know of your experience. Uh, do you have an accurate eyes? And you understand, let's say eagle eyes, yes? <laughs> yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting a lot better. And a lot of that has come from teachers that I've been working with, the body mapping and Alexander Technique teachers pointing things out that I would have never realized. My physical therapist pointing out that I was just in that posture out of habit and I didn't even notice it when I was away from my flute. And so um, a lot of the time you may think that you're aware of your body, but it actually helps to have another perspective as well, because that can just help you become more aware of maybe areas that you might be holding tension that you don't realize. And so a lot of the time with flutists, I find that we also tend to hold our arms so close to our body when we're playing. And like, because we're used to playing in small practice rooms and kind of crouching down to see our music. But also I realized that some of that came from from fear and from being so nervous it's almost like for me i was like hiding when i was playing and so that was leading to uh, my shoulders uh kind of coming forward too much and my arms are too close to my body i wasn't allowing myself to feel the space of the room and so i there were a lot of contractions because of that and so i've been trying through my work in body mapping and alexander technique to open up much more and I found it's been so much more comfortable and also just uh, allowing my arms to move further forward and give myself more space between my embouchure and my arm when I'm playing too. That's been really helpful. Um, but you have to really figure out what's best for your own body. So it's, it's really helpful to be aware of yourself, but it's also really helpful to have the perspective of professionals. Yes, yes, I, I totally agree. Uh, okay, can you just uh, teach us some of the uh, exercises? You told me about some yeah. specific. Can you just tell me about that? Sure. Should I yeah, stand so, up or? Um, yeah, you can stand up. We can definitely do that. Um, I'll start with okay. the box breathing. So this is an exercise okay. that really helps reduce performance anxiety or just anxiety in general. Um, I use it a lot in my daily life and it's really simple. Um, So all you do is you can either do this while sitting, standing or laying down if you choose. But basically, we're just going to breathe in for four counts, then hold the breath for four counts, then breathe out for four counts, and then hold the breath at the bottom. So we can try that together. So we'll breathe in one, two, three, four, and then hold one, two, three, four, breathe out, two, three, four, and then hold at the exhale, two, three, four. And we'll do that a couple times. So I'm gonna stop counting. Hold and exhale, one, two, three, four, and then hold at the bottom. And we'll do one more time. and then hold at the bottom. And usually I find after I do that a couple times, I feel much more relaxed and my heart rate slows down a little bit. So it's a really good tactic if you experience performance anxiety before performances or even just if you're feeling anxious and you feel like you're breathing really quickly or your heart is is pounding, it's really helpful just to take a minute or two and do that. And so now I think- think For the next live. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So I don't have enough 
space to stand up, but you are standing, so I'm going to teach you the standing warm up. So it's really important to do a physical warm up before you practice, um, just to get your blood flowing, your heart rate up. Um, you don't want to feel like anxious, but you do want to elevate your heart rate before you start practicing because you are using your muscles, and it's important to engage yes. large muscle groups as well. And you know all about that. <laughs> so. I like to start by doing shoulder rotation. So if you put your hands right on your shoulders and then, okay. yep. And then we're going to just do small circles forward. We'll do 10 of these and you can actually march in place if you would like to. That's really helpful. Uh, <laughs> I can't cause I don't have yeah, the space right you're now. You're killing me. Okay. <laughs> but it's, it's recommended to actually be marching in place while you do this. So I think oh. we're at like six or seven, eight, nine. Uh, the full body yeah. coordination, yeah. Sorry? Isn't it? Uh, the marching is full body coordination, isn't it? Yeah, and it also elevates your heart rate. Um, so it's a little bit of cardiovascular exercise. Okay, so once you've done about oh. 10 of those, then we're going to reverse and go backwards. And the really important part mm -hmm. is to not forget to keep breathing. Um, this may cause some pain for some people. So if it does cause pain, I would recommend not doing it. Maybe you can just do like shoulder rolls instead. Because sometimes the motion of putting your hands to your shoulder does cause pain. Uh, but yeah, keep marching in place <laughs> if you want to. Um, yeah. And then once you finish that, about 10 of those, then you can move to the large arm circles. And let me see if I can stand up at all. Not really. Um, so you can start doing large arm circles and keep marching in uh, place. Uh, yeah. I cannot see your hands. You're just uh, okay. doing something like this. Yes. Yeah. Yep. It's just uh -huh. all, so it's like all the way around. From the shoulder blade, yes? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll do 10 of those forward and try not to arch your back and you can keep marching during this as well. <laughs> I was lose too much, you know. <laughs> you didn't you'd be getting a workout today. Um, okay, so that's about 10 and then do the 10 in the reverse direction. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And so how do you feel? Do you feel like warm? Do you feel yes. a little yes. like your muscles are warm? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I'm sure, yeah. You know, I'm much, no, I'm much more ready to do something, you know? Yeah. I, think, okay. I, I feel like that relieves a lot of my tension that's built up uh, throughout the day as well. And so that was actually an exercise that I learned through the performing arts medicine course that I just took. Um, recommended uh -huh. by a physical therapist. So the marching in place aspect really helps get your heart rate up. And it's really important to start playing within five minutes of doing that exercise so that your muscles are actually still warm. Um, so like if you do that warm up and then you walk away for 10 minutes, it's really not gonna help you. So it's important to do it, try and do it as close to possible before you start playing. Um, so yeah, oh. I, I do that and I honestly feel so much better and then I've been setting timers when I practice. So I only practice for about 15 minutes at a time. My timer goes off and I take a five minute break. And so it's really important to actually set timers because sometimes I get so caught up in the practicing that I forget and, and breathe. And during those breaks, it's important to do some stretches and just rest and try not to use your, your hands too much because a lot of us are just used to like going on our phones like this during our breaks, but it's important to just kind yes. of like sit and stretch and just let your muscles relax. So do you have any, uh, any other questions about that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. I was, I think uh, I was actually going to ask you the question uh, while you are doing this, uh, you, of course you have saved awareness. Okay. And you understand, okay. I shouldn't, for example, uh, a strain this place or uh, contract my muscles or uh, a stiffness of the joints. You are thinking about all of them, of course, because you're a professional. 
But how about the uh, you know beginners? How do you teach them to you know uh, not uh, get rid of those these problems actually while they are yeah. doing, for example, something like this? Right. So if anything is causing pain, I would really recommend that you not do it. And so, like I said, you could do a modification. You could just do shoulder rolls, which sometimes are a lower impact, but also promote mobility. And you can also just like kind of like shake it out a little bit, like shake your shoulders out just to release some tension. Um, so it's really just important to know that if it doesn't work for your body, don't do it. Like if you're experiencing severe pain, just do a modification of, of the exercise. But I would say uh -huh. generally it's a pretty safe exercise for most people, but certainly if you're, if you're experiencing pain, just don't. And that goes back to the importance of being aware of your body. So uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's, um, it's something that I think really needs to be taught from a young age with musicians. Uh -huh. and so that's part of um, my hope for the future is that I'll help to improve performing arts health ed education in schools. Um, but it, it will take a long time, but I'm, I'm hopeful. <laughs> Uh, yes, yes, thank you. Uh, I know that you have different warm ups. For example, if uh, you have a concert, you have a, I mean, instruments, uh, instrumentless warm up, not uh, the warm up with your instrument. Uh, for example, if you have a concert, if you, for example, you want to practice in a day, uh, you have different warm ups. But uh, for regular uh, practice in a day, how long do you usually warm up your body before pra uh, starting to practice? I'd say no longer than five minutes. Um, you can even run in place. If that works for you, you could go up and down a couple flights of stairs, just something to get your heart rate elevated. Um, that's been proven to really help prevent injury, um, especially if you do it consistently. And then I always like to do a musical warm up to starting very slowly, maybe just with long tones um, or some intonation exercises, harmonics for me. Um, I don't know what the equivalent would be for guitar. But then you slowly build into um, quicker, quicker warm ups, and then usually I'll do long tones and then intonate, intonation exercises, and then I'll do scales and arpeggios, and I'll just gradually increase the tempo. So it's uh -huh. it's important to start slowly in your musical warm ups as well, and don't go from zero to a hundred, like from not uh -huh. playing at all that day to playing your scales at one twenty. <laughs> or something <laughs> yes. yeah musicians are really interested in 120 you know i don't know yeah. why but they really like to play at that tempo yeah it's really I haven't important my for skills at 120 yet <laughs> but you know someday <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, francesca how about here for example imagine i'm a guitar player uh, i do some warm-up from here here and the big muscles how about the small ones uh, that we use here you are of course you use it in your food uh, how do you warm up these uh, small muscles you know that's actually something i think you can answer much better than i can because your work is so based in in the small muscles and i'm actually really interested to hear what you have to say about that so sorry i can't answer that but i'm, I'm really interested in, in your method so if you'd like to talk about it i think i have to change places yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can actually uh, talk about that if you are interested if you have any questions uh, uh, i will be you know pleased to answer that it's my honor uh, should i tell you anything should i answer anything yeah just just talk about maybe if you could demonstrate some exercises for for the small muscles that that you guys demonstrate i think that would be really interesting yes uh we really believe that uh, in warm-ups we have to start with uh, small muscles but at first we have to uh, get rid of the contractions uh at the beginning of the warm-up we use some muscle contraction release in these places i mean the shoulders the chest the back uh, to get rid of the you know, possible contractions that uh, we would uh, actually face during the day not uh, just in instrument playing for example imagine that uh, last night uh, the way that i was sleeping was not a good posture for example i was like this so when i get up in the morning i feel some contractions of course here here and we use some exercises to get rid of those ones. For example, let me demonstrate some of them. Uh, I think they would be useful. For example, uh, they all should be done in a, uh, as freely as you can. And can you join me? 
Yeah. It's my pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> you standing? At the first uh, is uh, we call the first thing vertical shoulders, okay? Okay. Let's see. See if I can stand. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, I'm standing. Okay. okay. Yes. We named, the, we named the first one the vertical shoulders. Okay. Uh, we imagine two, uh, let's say, uh, two things here like this. Okay. And we try to uh, rise our shoulders and let it go. See? Right. My hands are not in the right uh, comfortable position here. I just do something and let it go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's nice. <laughs> yes. You can get rid of the uh, contra possible contractions. Yeah. Yeah. It's really worse. Uh, but uh, you have to uh, not pay attention that when you are rising your shoulders, it shouldn't be something like this. They have to come up uh, in this way. You see, it comes yeah. and goes up. It shouldn't, you know, be something like this. It's it's not good. It's like this. Goes up and. You let it go. Yeah. See, and uh, for uh, we have another one. Uh, I think uh, they use uh, another form of it in Alexander technique, but what we use it is a little bit different. We do something like this. Oh yeah, I love that. <laughs> yes, it really works. You know, for uh, your back muscles and yeah. uh, your hands are going to be really free when you do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember doing that in Alexander Technique, absolutely. This is a wonderful one. I really like this one. Yeah, it really helps. It, it really uh, turning, because we are turning. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we have another one which is uh, unique to us. It's called uh, uh, Ski Stick, okay? Uh, I'll do something like this, see? I just uh, threw my hands and I just let go of them. But uh, I don't uh, fold my elbows because uh, there are going to be some uh, pressure here. So I, I think, uh, you know, my arms as a whole, I think, okay, it's a, it's a one thing that I have to throw it up. And then I let it go. And I do it. But uh, it uh, goes up as far as your uh, mouth here. See, not more. For, uh, at the beginning, uh, for uh, learning that better, you can do something. You can, for example, uh, you know, be in this position and try to, uh, you know, let go of your hands, like yeah. you are, for example, a ski. If you do that, you understand, okay, my hands are getting, you know, a little bit, uh, say, heavier, and you think, okay, it's working, it's working in here. There are going to be yeah. uh, the contraction people released. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you. I learned something today. That's what I was talking about, about the Instagram community. I just learn something new every day. I, I love it. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, those were actually ones I've done before, but I, I had forgotten about them. So thank you for re reminding me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm really glad that you liked them. Uh, let's, yeah, uh, I feel great. <laughs> let's, Thank you. Uh, let's uh, do some exercises in the hand. You know, when we are doing exercises in the hand, we make sure that uh, all the muscles are relaxed and there is no no contraction in our muscles. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Let's start do something really easy. Uh, imagine that you wanna uh, snap your finger, okay? But in a really really relaxed way, okay? Uh, you do it for all of your fingers. See, I do something like this. See, they all go yeah. here. Really relax freely and slowly. From this finger to the thumb. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, exactly. 